So, I'm sure if you clicked on this video, then you've most likely heard that a new Mortal Kombat game was just recently announced, titled Mortal Kombat 1. What, did they forget to type the rest? Didn't they mean Mortal Kombat 12? Okay, y you know what? Let me rant for a second. The Mortal Kombat series has had a history of the most abysmal title choices ever. The first three were just called Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat 2, Mortal Kombat 3, then there was an expanded version of Mortal Kombat 3 called Mortal Kombat 3 Ultimate. Okay, so far so good. Mortal Kombat 4, then Mortal Kombat Gold, which is an expanded version of Mortal Kombat 4, but instead of just calling it Mortal Kombat 4 Ultimate, they called it Mortal Kombat Gold, which makes it sound like a totally different game even though it is not. And then at this point, they just ditched the numbering system in favor of subtitles. You know, that's, that's fine. They base the names upon a theme or large event that takes place during the story. It makes it, you know, maybe have a little bit more variety. That's fine, alright? So this is where we get Mortal Kombat Deception, Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks, Mortal Kombat Armageddon, and then they do Mortal Kombat versus DC Universe, which is, you know, interesting, but uh, sure, it's fine. At this point, the names aren't that bad, but here's the kicker. The next game, which is referred to typically as Mortal Kombat 9, is just titled Mortal Kombat. Just Mortal Kombat. So now there's two games that are just called Mortal Kombat. So. That's why the fans just kind of decided, hey, we're going to call this Mortal Kombat 9, instead of Mortal Kombat 2011. In line with this, NetherRealm calls the next title Mortal Kombat X, with the X being a subtitle, or, you know, the Roman numeral for 10. Okay, so went from Mortal Kombat, which was supposed to be a reboot, to Mortal Kombat 10, Mortal Kombat X. Okay, a little weird that they went from a game that's supposed to be a reboot to, uh, uh, the number again, like as if it's just the next sequel. It's kind of weird, but you know what? That's that's fine. They want to go back to numbers, then that's fine. But then the, the the DLC version, though, the version that is has extra shit. It's not Mortal Kombat X Ultimate. It's not Mortal Kombat Gold Two. It's Mortal Kombat XL, meaning Mortal Kombat Extra Large, because it has all of the different content for the game. So, okay, what, what what's weird though is that doesn't that make it? seem like the original was called Mortal Kombat Extra, because it's an X? Or is it called Mortal Kombat 10 Large? What what the fuck is going on here? I know it's simple, but it, it's just, it, it's just why? It's, it's stupid, it feels dumb. Then, they say, fuck it, no Roman numeral. Here's Mortal Kombat 11, straight up, just Mortal Kombat 11. This shit pisses me off, because Mortal Kombat 9 isn't called that, it's just called Mortal Kombat. But, no, 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 no. Now they decide to call it Mortal Kombat 1, which is stupid, because now if you say Mortal Kombat 1, you have to always specify if it's the 1992 version or the 2023 version. Why is this even a trend in general in naming reboots? It's stupid. Okay, okay. Call of Duty Modern Warfare. You know what? Whatever. The original was normally referenced as COD 4 anyways, so who really cares? I... Motherfucker. Really? Modern Warfare 2. Okay. So, now it always has to be clarified which one that somebody is talking about, if it's the new Modern Warfare 2, or if it's the old Modern Warfare 2. Okay, and then now the next Call of Duty is supposed to be called Modern Warfare 3, which is just annoying. Why? Why are they doing it like this? Oh, and, and God of War as well. It's a great game, but it came out in 2018, so now if you're saying, oh, I, I was playing God of War the other day, you have to say, oh yeah, God of War 2018, or no, God of War 2005. Like, wh why couldn't they have just done it with a subtitle like they did for God of War Ragnarok? It's just, it's just dumb. Why? And Battlefield 1? Are you kidding me? That's just a stupid name. Friday the 13th, 1980. Friday the 13th, 2009. This shit isn't limited to video games. There are three fucking movies that are part of the same series and are all called Halloween. Halloween 1979, Halloween 2007, and Halloween 2018. Like, just name it other shit. Is it that hard? Alright. Anyways, I finished my rant. Let's get to the actual video. What you are looking at right now is the actual Mortal Kombat 1. The original game from 1992. Running on my PC. I want to preface this with the fact that I'm playing the arcade collection version. Speaking of that, what I had to go through to play this game was ridiculous. It's not on Steam anymore. So I had to go to some strange and sketchy websites to get my hands on this. And not to mention it uses the butt-ass old Games for Windows Live service, so I had to find a workaround for that. Anyways, I decided upon opening the game that in 
order to consider myself having completed the game, I have to run through the gauntlet on each and every character. I honestly went into this initially with total confidence because I've played plenty of Mortal Kombat in my life, so I should know what's necessary to getting through this. No, I got my ass kicked. The AI on this game is honestly much more skilled than I thought it would be. I couldn't figure out the controls at first either, which doesn't help. I honestly think the difficulty is because this was, of course, originally an arcade game, so the developers made it to eat up as many quarters as humanly possible, so they can make a lot of money. Alright, so, you know, let's just talk about the first character. I'm Johnny Cage. No contest. This man has some very basic moves. He fire green orb and he do cool kick. He also does the splits, but I don't think it does anything other than look funny. This was written before I figured out that it actually punched people in the balls. As I am writing this section, it is 4am, and I am leaving my PC on in hopes of continuing in the morning. I had a struggle up until the endurance round section. The endurance round section is so insanely difficult, I would rather staple my nutsack to a wooden post and be lit on fire. I realized I had been attempting for a very long time and it was 3am and I needed to go to bed. So here I am now. I really hope that my cats do not climb on my PC and turn it off at some point before I wake up. Thank God, that didn't happen. I wrote this part in the morning, and uh, I can finally get back to gaming. I still continuously got fucked for over an hour. Alright, so I'm, I'm recording my microphone in my desktop audio now because I am pissed. Alright, this shit, it, it's horse shit, okay? I, listen, maybe it's just copium. Maybe I just suck ass. But I swear to God, the AI in this game is so insanely unpredictable. Like, look, that time, it was really easy. Like, I kind of just, like, destroyed him, right? And now I'm focusing. See, this works sometimes, and then eventually, though, they'll fight it back. Yeah, like that. And then that shit is gonna kill me. It does so much fucking damage, it's horse shit. Look at how low his health was. Scorpion kept killing me damn near instantly with his fucking hook. It does so much fucking damage, it's crazy. Once I did finally beat it, I felt so insanely hyped. Let's fucking go! Yes! I can't believe- Oh my god, I'm so excited. I'm so happy right now. That makes me so insanely happy. Oh my god, I can't believe I just did that. The other endurance ones were pitifully easy in comparison. Then, there's Goro. I couldn't even fucking get out of the way in time. Fuck off, man. Oh my god. Goro was real tough for me for a while. I spent about 25 minutes without winning a single round against him. This is due to the fact that all of his attacks feel like they do double damage, and that he also has double health. However, once I did defeat him one round, he was a piece of cake. Fuck you, man. Holy shit. Holy shit! Let's go! Shang Tsung wasn't that bad. I got fucked real bad a couple of times, but once I just kind of kept spamming air kick, I ended up defeating him. Holy shit! Holy shit! I did it! I'm the Supreme Mortal Kombat Warrior. Johnny went back to Hollywood and made a Mortal Kombat movie with many successful sweetquels. Sweetquels? Yeah, sweetquels. Now I play as Kano. At first I had trouble understanding the Kano ball move, but then I realized I can just move my thumb in a circle and he turns into a circle, which is kinda cool. I didn't have much issue until Gora. God! I hate it! Oh my fucking god! What the hell? I hate it! That move! <laughs> oh my god! Oh 
my how why why oh my fucking god Bruh! Goddamn fucking second to do fucking anything. Why? Like, what am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to know that he was gonna block that there? How? Excellent. It's not fucking excellent, man. Excellent. Holy fucking shit, man. How? I was pressing the fucking button and it did nothing. I fucking hated fighting Goro as Kano. I got so insanely pissed off, I wanted to break something. Shang Tsung was also fucking annoying because it felt so unfair sometimes. Probably a skill issue, but I don't care. It, it pissed me off anyhow. Oh, haha! <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna teleport behind me! <laughs> I don't wanna fight Goro! I'm having no fun right now. I'm having zero fucking fun! Thank you! Oh my god! God! Fuck! After I win, Kano goes and takes over the tournament and is an awful leader and the whole tournament gets overthrown. Sub-Zero was pretty fun to play. I got through everything pretty quick and Goro wasn't that bad this time. However, I was getting pissed off at the Shang Tsung fight and I got an epiphany. Why the fuck do I need to beat the game with every character to feel like I've experienced what this game has to offer? Their answer is, I don't. I truly do not care if there are other characters that are more fun or if I didn't get the full experience. The game really isn't all that, sure, sure. It did a lot for the fighting games, it was controversial at the time because all the fatalities and the blood and, you know, it kind of was part of the reason why there even is an M rating system today. That's all cool, but to be honest, there isn't much of a reason to go back to this game under any circumstance other than novelty. Well, and of course nostalgia, but that's really if you're just an old fuck. The game in general feels really limited. The only two modes this game has is the classic tower mode and then 1v1 against your friends. That's all. It it really needs nothing else since it is an arcade game after all, but still. There are many other Mortal Kombat games that feel more polished, smooth, look better, and have better mechanics with a variety of game modes. This game on its own isn't bad, but with the context of the other Mortal Kombat games that followed, it quickly becomes obsolete. With that being said, this game gets a 4 out of 10. All of those points are really because of what it did for the industry rather than what it does for someone like me in this day and age. It's not designed poorly, it's just that there are games that are designed better that are easier to play. It was a pain in the ass trying to get to play this, and it feels like I kind of wasted my time trying so hard to do that because the game really isn't anything insanely special. At least, it's not now going back to it. I hope that you all enjoyed watching this video. Subscribe for more, and let me know what you think about the game in the comments and the video. Have a good day.